composites are light in weight compared to metal. Reduced weight leads to substantial fuel savings and a more cost-effective airplane. Fiber composites, such as Kevlar, graphite, and fiberglass, are used in primary load-bearing structures. They're designed to have both the strength and stiffness required to withstand the forces of flight. However, an important difference between composites and metal is their resistance to damage. Both materials are strong, but strength can be deceptive. Glass is strong enough to support many times its own weight, yet glass is brittle. Composites are also brittle, so their damage tolerance is different than metal. Metals, like aluminum, become plastic under stress, bending or stretching until they finally break. Composite materials are elastic. They resist stress up to a point and then suddenly fail. This characteristic is crucial to understanding how impact affects composite material. It starts with the way composites are made. Fibers are embedded in a resin matrix. The matrix is relatively weak and serves primarily to bind the fibers together. These fibers give the material its strength. Yet the fibers are also brittle. Fibers are aligned in one direction. This allows the material to resist forces that compress or pull on the structure. But because of the weak matrix, there is little resistance to force from the sides. To compensate for this, unidirectional plies are laminated together at various angles. This improves its resistance to forces from all sides, except top and bottom. The weak matrix and brittle fibers provide little resistance to stress from this direction. It is a bit like the structure of an egg. An eggshell is rather strong when squeezed from one direction, but apply just a bit of pressure from the side and Hearts with honeycomb core are especially vulnerable to damage, since the laminate skin is very thin. Composite materials undergo extensive testing to determine their ability to withstand various types of stress. One, two, three. Energy from an impact can damage the material in several ways. High velocity impacts result in punctures and a relatively small damage zone. A medium energy impact will crush the surface material. Internal delamination is extensive, and often fibers are fractured on the back side. Damage from both high and medium impact is severe, but easily identified. A low energy impact, say from a bump or tool drop, can show little if any external sign of damage. However, internally there may be extensive delamination spreading in a cone-shaped area from the point of impact. The key point is that just because an impact doesn't leave a mark doesn't mean that damage hasn't occurred. If you think you may have damaged a part, bring it to your supervisor's attention. An information pickup will be written to ensure that the part will be tested. Most, but not all, parts go through non-destructive testing. Therefore, it is important that you identify any parts that might have been damaged. After parts are cleared by NDT, it is crucial they be handled carefully during all assembly operations. Impact damage creates a large percentage of rework activity, as well as many scrapped parts, and that's costly. A lot of your time and effort goes into each part. The paperwork required to process rejected parts is expensive, and some parts cost as much as the yearly wage of a grade three employee. Producing composite parts is labor intensive, and each time a part is handled, there is opportunity for it to be damaged. So careful handling is important during every step of the manufacturing and assembly process. Here's what you can do to handle parts properly. Know your materials. Keep work areas clean. Lift parts properly. Maintain equipment in good order. And store parts safely.
Heat and pressure transform the pliable composite materials into rigid laminate parts. Along the way, they are vulnerable to different kinds of damage. During layup, use care to avoid cutting through underlying plies, since this will reduce the strength of the part. Hold the knife steady and pull the material into the blade. Careful handling of core is essential. Damaged cells shouldn't be popped back into place. They will fail under the heat and pressure of the autoclave. Bagged parts can be damaged by hard or heavy objects placed on them. Half moon dents are the result. Parts with aerodynamic surfaces or appearance items may require rework if surface blemishes occur. Hooking up parts for the autoclave requires extreme care. Avoid stepping or kneeling on parts. If there is no other way, then minimize the force by walking on the edges of the tool. Most damage occurs after parts are cured. Debag parts carefully. Applying too much force can fracture or delaminate assemblies. Especially in your radius areas. In your tight radius areas, you want to be sure that you don't apply too much force because it will crack or delam the part. Wedges can be used to evenly lift parts from tools. Part edges are fragile and can be damaged by anything hard. Belt buckles, rings, or even other composite parts. By following a few general shop practices, damage can be significantly reduced. Make sure you have enough room to work and keep work areas clean and free of clutter. To shield parts from accidental impact, metal connectors are padded. Keep them that way. While working, keep tools not in use a safe distance from parts. When moving parts, there are many potential dangers to be avoided. Often, the shop is an obstacle course. So before moving apart, clear a path. And check to see if there's enough room to safely set it down. Take the time to handle parts correctly. Rushing or trying to move a large part by yourself isn't worth the risk of damaging the part. Use two people to lift parts that are awkward, heavy, or longer than four feet. Don't allow long panels to flex. Support the load evenly to distribute the weight and minimize part flexing. When you're picking up elevator panels, you need to pick them up here and over here. These areas right here are the core base, and they're the weakest points of the whole panel. Bare metal is damage waiting to happen. Be sure foam or clear plastic protectors are in place. Check all equipment prior to usage, and report any equipment that needs repair to your lead or supervisor. Transportation equipment takes a beating, so check racks for damage or debris that might ruin parts. Make sure tables have protective covering. Always check to make sure there's no debris on the cart before you put parts on it. Tools should also be cleaned before they're used. Remove grit or hardened resin chips. Ideally, leave plenty of room between parts. But if you have to stack them, always interleave with cardboard. Put heavier material on the bottom. To avoid surface abrasions and bangs, lift parts. Don't drag them. Check racks for any debris that might cause damage. When possible, choose equipment that is large enough to hold the entire part. It's important to keep costs down by preventing damage. There are many things you can do to handle parts properly. 
composite materials have both strengths and weaknesses. Anyone who handles composites should be aware of their characteristics. Remember, improper handling can damage composites even though the damage isn't visible. Keep work areas clean. Most damage happens after parts are cured. Take the time to lift and move parts correctly. Always inspect equipment before using and keep equipment properly maintained. Protect parts by storing them safely. To keep composites a competitive alternative to other materials, it is vital that we reduce the high costs involved in composite production. Choosing to handle composites properly is one way to achieve this. You wouldn't know it, but this is a well-coordinated activity done by professionals. But even these professionals can have accidents. That's why we all have to be aware of what we do when we're working around an airplane. Today's airplanes make wide use of composites in their structure. Some of these areas are the wing-to-body fairing, engine cowls, spoilers, aileron, rudder and elevator, landing gear doors, and other primary and secondary structures. Composites! What are composites? Simply put, composites are high-strength fibers in a resin matrix. They can be Kevlar epoxy, like this air conditioning duct. Or carbon fiber epoxy, like this spoiler. Or maybe fiberglass reinforced plastic, like this floor panel. All of these are composites. Well, why composites on the airplane? One big reason is weight reduction. Using composites can reduce the weight of a part by up to 20 percent. On the Boeing 777, the weight saving because of composites is about equal to the weight of 15 passengers plus baggage. Another reason for using composites is corrosion resistance. Plastic parts don't corrode. That's why we're using composites in the floor beams for the 777. Composites also have a high strength to weight ratio for both tension and compression loads. 
this can be as much as 30% higher than aluminum. We can see this when an aerodynamic surface, such as an aileron, is put under load. As the top surface is loaded, it compresses, and the bottom surface is put under tension. As the loads change, the part is subjected to both pressure and sonic fatigue. Again, advanced composite laminates have fatigue characteristics superior to those of metal. Composite laminates get their superior strength from the light, strong fibers and the way they are built up. If we take a composite laminate apart, we can see how the layers or plies are rotated to improve the structure's resistance to stress from all sides. The plies are held together by an epoxy resin matrix cured under heat and pressure. This relatively weak matrix and strong but brittle fibers supplied little resistance to surface impact damage. That's why when there are surface strikes to composites, you should report them and have the damage checked in the structural repair manual. The SRM gives inspection and repair procedures. It also gives limits for allowable damage. So before assuming what is or is not allowable damage, report it. Let me tell you some stories to show you what I mean. Wednesday, the weather is warm, and it's a good day so far in the flight line. Flight 236, a Boeing 747-400, is being worked for a 3.30 departure for Hawaii. The cleaners had just about finished cleaning the cabin, and the guys from Fly Food Caterers are ready to service the galleys. As the catering truck approaches the airplane, Jack Short gets out to guide it in. As he does, Sam Long, lifetime buddy and fishing partner, comes over to catch up on the latest. Stop! Get her down! Get her down! I don't see any damage! Okay, good. Back, back it out here. This accident could have been prevented, but it happened. It should have been reported, but it wasn't. And this is what happened. When the truck hit the fairing, it caused the near side of the fairing to disbond from the core and delaminate the skin. This weakened the structure. As the plane went through many cycles, the fibers broke down and the structure failed. This caused the fairing to come apart. If this had been reported, the fairing could have been repaired at the next day check. Now, a $16,000 fairing has to be replaced. Monday, a typical Monday on the flight line. screwdriver on the elevator. You did what? Yeah, well, it's not a big dent, but it's a dent. Well, let's go see what you did. All right. All this damage, I've gotten worse dents in my car in the company parking lot. Let's go down. With this dent, no problem. I can see a small dent, but it's not bad. Just forget it. It's not worth the paperwork. Wrong. Composites aren't metal. 
What you don't see is the damage on the inside. The surface may seem okay, but the skin is broken and has delaminated. As the plane flies, water will get into the honeycomb core and then freeze, breaking the core. And the cycle goes on and on. You can see how a small dent can become major damage. That small dent could have been repaired for about $100 in eight hours of labor, but it wasn't. And now the entire elevator will have to be reworked. Reworking the elevator will take 800 hours, plus $10,000 for repair materials and fasteners. In addition, a leased elevator will cost about $12,000 for the two weeks it takes to repair the original. Any way you look at it, it's a lot of money. Tuesday, it is warm and sunny. Flight 310 is loading. Gary Lee, baggage handler, was loading freight in the cargo compartment. As he waits for another load, he notices a scratch on the engine cowl. Hey, Bruce! Come here and look at that! Whoa, how'd you do that? Hey, I didn't do it! I just saw it! Well, we'll have to report that. You remember what Earl said about reporting aircraft damage. Okay, but you do it. Okay. Good thing this was reported. The SRM said that this damage could be covered with speed tape and repaired later. If it had gone unprotected, it would have grown, and a $100,000 cow would have to be replaced. Remember, preventative maintenance is also important. So repair edge erosion promptly to prevent delamination. Touch up missing paint to protect composites. Repair oil leaks promptly and remove all oil contamination from composites. Use care when opening or closing doors and access panels. Use care when positioning ground equipment. Hot engine exhaust can damage composites. This completes our stories about composite structures awareness. You probably have many stories of your own, but as you have seen, just being careful is not enough. Know what to do when a problem comes up, who should know about it, and where on the airplane the composites are located, and be aware.